So, let's have comfortable in your chair. And um, to begin with, as always, the forward position. But by forward, I mean, um, uh, if I'm, no, if it, I'm, I'm sitting as close to the front of the chair as, as I can. I'm not using what would be the back at all. Just for a few moments, just to establish that this is that this is what I'm kind of m moving towards. As and when I find it sort of like maybe make my back a bit stiff, I would move back. And if I was like this, and that, the, the, there was the back there, the lower part of my back would be will be supported by the back of the chair, which in most cases is sufficient. But it really isn't worth sacrificing your back. Um, and it can be quite strong in 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 uh, your, your back, especially the, the the lower back. So just be just be aware of that, but have a sense of this position and that you're moving towards this. And gradually, your back will condition your muscles and spine and things like that will will develop, and it, and it will become more more comfortable for you, which is obviously a good thing. But it, it shouldn't be pushed hard. Rubbing your hands together and tapping over your face. Over your head and neck. Down to one shoulder. And your arm. The other side. Upper part of your chest. Your belly. And your legs. Okay, so th this this posture is sort of one half of the picture. Um, supported by your, your your own muscles, by your skeleton, by the chair, and so on and so forth. Um, and hopefully, quite kind of soft. Look at it from the other side, but but putting your feet out, sit back in your chair, in reclining position. This is one in which we're probably going to be quite able to. Relax more, literally let go of the tension to literally re re relax. And so what we want to try and do is, is to discover what sort of elements where, where we can find in, in this posture to try and bring into the upright posture. Things like your weight dropping back in into the chair. You don't have to hold yourself up at all. And that's probably one of the most important things Noticing the effects of that on things like your breathing, on any kind of sensations in your chest or your belly or your shoulders. This is areas that are a bit stiff or a bit tight even now. And then coming into the upright posture, once again, again, you know, um, just find a good position, one, one that you feel you could stay in reasonably comfortably for, for, for a while. And that may vary, of course, you know, it's not that you're not allowed to move. But somehow, we want to bring into this upright posture, one in which we're quite often just, just automatically uh, tightening up. Some of those qualities of softening that we felt in the reclining position. So we're kind of trying to take the best from both worlds in OG. So an, an, an important element here is going to be how you, much you're in line with, with, with the pull of gravity. So for instance, if I was to lean in right out here, 
then obviously this is not a position that's going to encourage a sense of softening because if I do let go of tension, I'm just going to fall out of the chair and so on and so forth. So in practice, what we're looking for is 30% of our weight in our feet, 70% going down through the hips and buttocks. So that brings our head to towards the middle of the distance between hips and feet. which means that any weight from the upper part of the body can fall into that space between legs and feet. And it's within that space that, that you actually have the support. And so what starts to happen, and it can take a while, this is a, it's a very simple idea, but it's not easy. But what will often start to happen is that we will begin to lose some of the tightness, say, in our back or our shoulders. And gradually what emerges from this is what is what is still supporting this. So we tend to have two responses to any kind of force that acts on us, and we're talking about how gravity works, works on us. One is to, to get really tight and to, sti to, to, to stiffen up, the other is to, to give way to it. Um, and again, we're, we're, we're trying to take elements from both of those. What we would call inside she is yielding. And yielding is about allowing whatever force is acting on the, the, the body to pass through. And in this instance, the, 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 the route that it passes through is really, you can measure from the crown of your head through to this space here. Imagine this has been, been, been like, like a, a hole in the ground that water's draining the way through. So that, that's not the same as just sort of like laying down and letting gravity put you in put you into the ground. And we begin to recognize this quality of inner strength. And we could think of you know, being supported by our skeleton, for instance. And not just the skeleton, but the various muscles and tendons and ligaments that are closely associated with that inner skeleton. Sense that the that your body as a whole becomes denser as you travel inwards, like like a balloon. When you push on a balloon, you meet more and more resistance, but never never tight, never hard or stiff but nevertheless strong enough to hold us upright. So this is the basic feeling, the basic posture that we take into the various exercises, both seated and, and standing, trying to maintain it. And that's, that, that is also a, a a tricky process, but it's important to establish what it is we're trying to maintain and to cultivate to begin with. Now, just slowly turning your head. So, how we move, how far we move, our general sort of approach to movement is it, is it a struggle or is it um, actually something that feels quite good, quite smooth? Can we find a way to? veer towards that latter aspect rather than the, the struggling aspect. That may mean, may mean quite a small movement, especially to, to begin with. It may, it may mean thinking about how we produce the movement, because this is a turn in the head. So our, our, that's, that's where our attention is. But muscles in your chest and your upper back are all being engaged in this movement. So. One of the things we look to do in Tai Chi is to spread the effort through more of our body. Hands in front of your shoulders. And that connection to your chest and upper back is stronger, I think, with this exercise. And we begin to get a, an appreciation of this phrase that I rather like in the Tai Chi writings. When one part of your body is in motion, your whole body is in motion. As long as you don't tell that is literally true, then 
what begins to happen is that we get more and more connected through the, through the body and any one movement that we make has more and more of, of, of our body's strength and energy involved in it. Going forwards. Hands down to your sides, rotating your arms. And winding around. And back the other way. Use more of your weight into your feet. And <clears throat> in the first instance, really paying attention to feeling in your legs. Again, I'll show you from, from the side. It's like your legs are being compressed. I sometimes talk about the legs as being like a string, but if you think of them as a kind of bendy piece of wood and leaning into them, the wood is bending and then springs back. There's a similar kind of feeling as I go back in lower back, hips, buttocks, sinking down and then being pushed forwards. One other element here that I think is interesting is in the forward position, your hips are still dropping back. It's like somebody sitting behind your chair, you grab hold of your belt and they're pulling. So even as you go forwards, there's just a little bit of that potential backward move, movement. And that feeling of your hips dropping back, if you imagine a line from your hips to your shoulders, from the base of your spine to the crown of your head, imagine it as, a, as an elastic band. And so it contracts and it, this, this movement helps to bring your your, your shoulders and your head to the upright position. <clears throat> this is something that's actually going to be more prominent and more important when we do the standing part of the class. So this is a good exercise to try and just register that feeling with. Once you've got the, the sense of what I'm talking about, you'll be able to find it in other situations. Turn a little bit. And then you're going towards one leg. This is just about investigating the various potential patterns of movement within our body. On the other side, the other direction. And then all the way around. Try not to hold your back your spine tight.
and then change direction. Come back to the test. Push one foot out, put the heel on the floor, lower the toes, just measuring your step so that here your, your, your knee isn't locked out. Slight curve in the knee. And then on the other side. So these are good exercises, this opening set of exercises. They will be good for the joints and the, um, and the circulation. When we bring in that sense of using the, the, the whole body in the foot back now, it's very much, I think, um, a, a feeling that, that there are some very important principles wrapped up in these things. Now come back to the upright position. And hands at your side, once again, turning palm forwards. And then third forwards, it swings. You go forwards and just rotate your arms. Don't, don't try and push them forwards or backwards. And back. Again, feeling the effect of this movement in chest and upper back. Do one more, backwards and forwards. And change into fisherman cast the net. If you imagine doing this in water, you'll get the feeling that you know, you're you tilt forward, your shoulders go forward, but your arm is left behind slightly. Same thing here, a bit of a pull on your arm. So the image of moving through water offers us quite a lot of insight into this movement. Because it would be very hard in water just to do that. We have to use more, more of our body. We have to do it in a fairly quiet way. I'm just resting this hand, by the way, so I can't get it. When we add that image of water, then obviously something's got to work a little bit harder to bring my arms through, to push the chest and the back through. And again, you know, we can start to think of that inner strength and so the, the, the image of moving through water gradually builds that fluid strength within the body. And then this time you imagine the ball behind your arms. So as you come back, and are drawn over the ball, rolling the ball in towards your chest. more time. And then position spreads its wings, your arms come up with the sun turning, arm in, expanding in your chest as you go back, expanding in your back as you go. 
Well, perhaps better than think of it the other way around. Here, the chest contracts, the chest bone, the sternum sort of seems to sink into your chest. Here, as we go back, we feel the shoulder blades, like the, there's an elastic band between them again. And as we come forward, that gets extended outwards. As we go back, it naturally contracts back in. And then pushing wave. Slightly stronger feeling, slightly more economical in its movement than the previous ones. One more time. As you come back this time, rolling your fingers into a loose fist. And by that I mean you should be able to get a finger comfortably down through, through the middle of the fist. If it's tight, you won't be able to do that. Punch with both hands. One more time. So open your fingers, turning your hands all the way out. A bit, like, a bit like doing the breaststroke as you come back. Tip should be going forwards in the breaststroke. Isn't it? Now, come back, turning your hands palm down. Turn in the center of your body before you go forwards. Creating a circular movement, polishing the table. And if you really had a table in front of you, then if you went forwards like this and you know, the table was reasonably shiny, you weren't resisting the movement, it would be quite natural for your fingers to slide forwards. So try and get away from the idea that from here we're sort of going to go like this with, with the arms. You turn, tilting forwards towards the right leg, swing back, coming into the upright position. And turn the opposite way, same thing in this way. One more time. Turning your hands palm up. And using the combination of feet and hips, pushing down together, create an upward movement that pushes your hands up. And then turn your hands over, feel your hips dropping into the chair, shoulders dropping, hands. 
your back lengthens slightly as you expand upwards and then contract on the way down. Changing to the wild goose, but it's the same or very similar internal dynamic. So the, the foundations of this art are really very simple. And we move from the feet and the hips. We move with the rhythm of expansion and contraction. We move with awareness, with intent. Well then, if that's the foundation layer, then the layer above that increases in complexity in our responses. Moving forwards. Now, change into dragon plucks the stars from the sky. This time, hands drop down to your side rather than in front, and pushing up and drawing down. Pushing up, extending through the side of the body. And again, that sort of elastic quality. Still trying to engage your feet and your hips. Feeling that little bit of a, a slight compression through your back, down into your legs. One more time. And then change in. Remember that idea that when our hands go out or up, there's a, a point that they can arrive at, which is comfortable. You feel the weight of your arms hanging down here, for instance. It won't always be the same place, but have it as part of your sort of overall intent. You're going to move to those spaces.
10 bond foot. So now, easing forward, scooping the sea and looking at the sky. More time. And then grasping the tiger's ears. Good. Change over. And then changing. One more time. Now, part of the wild horse's mane, more complex. So um, we get a chance to compare different types of, 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 of movement, um, so opening and closing, extending and, and contracting. And also to practice this, this to continuation of, of 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 the sequence without getting baffled by the apparent complexity. So let's start with just the weight movement. Move your weight, the majority of your weight, back into your right hip, and then go forwards into your left leg. I'm exaggerating this a bit so you can see what I'm doing. And go back. And once you're back in the right hip, you turn slightly, you go across into your left hip, and then you go forwards in to your right foot. So you think of a, an X shape with a line underneath. And you keep going, <coughs> going, through the, <coughs> going through that process. Put your hands in front of you. Just as though you've got something sort of like a tray of drinks in, in your hand and just feel 
you know, that your arms and your hands are being moved by that combination of weight transfer and the turning in your center. So there's a sensation of movement, of energy already in your arms and hands, not something we have to create extra for. What we want to do now is to take that movement and to give it a particular shape. So here, as you go forward into your left foot, use that movement to swing the left arm out, come back, bring the hand back, hold the ball, move across. Same thing on the other side, but the top hand will press downwards. What can often happen with something a little bit more complicated is that we start to anticipate things and inevitably that affects our arms more than it affects our legs. So here, for instance, think about the hand. Right hand is palm up, left hand is palm down. Same thing here. Now, there's, you know at some point the hands are going, the arms are going to rotate. And there's a temptation to do it too soon. In fact, it doesn't happen until here. So what we often find ourselves doing is something like this. You know, the left hand goes out and it's already rotating. But that's too much with the, the arm and the hand. So do as little as possible. I mean, you know, I talked about carrying a tray of drinks. Imagine you were just handing a drink to somebody, you know, a cup of tea or something like that, or a glass of something. What you wouldn't want to do if you were doing that would be to sort of you know, hand a drink out and then go, oh, I've got to do this. You'd spill the drink, wouldn't you? So our arms and hands retain a very quiet quality. One more time. And then just come back in there. Take note of the qualities of this and the characteristics of this position, particularly in the upper part of your body, because they're things that you're going to want to try and reproduce standing. So things like you know, the, the feeling of lengthening through it through your back, in the front of your body, supported by your back, and so on and so forth. Whatever else you notice. Just rubbing your hands together. Tapping over your face again. Over your head and neck. Down for one shoulder and your arm. The other side. Upper part of the chest. And your belly. And legs. And then just pushing your heels up, get the muscles of your legs working a little bit before we try and stand on them. Uh, 
and then around and then back the other way and stand in. So it's obvious what the role of our legs is when we're standing. We want to have our feet and our hips as always pointing forward. So don't have your feet too close together. When we're in the chair, it was possible to get that sense of softening and releasing tightness in the upper part of the body because the chair was quite comfortable. You imagine what it would have been like if it had been a really narrow chair. It would have been nearly as comfortable or easy to, to get that feeling. So this you know, is possible, but it, you're, you're always going to be oh, a bit kind of wobbly. So feet hip, hip width apart. Weight slightly forwards. I'm exaggerating this. And your hips dropping back. So notice that when my hips drop back, like in the chair, and when the chair talk about somebody pulling on your belt, put, pulling your hips down, and that ball is more to an upright position. Um, we're going to be more upright than we are in, in in the chair because we don't want any of our weight forwards in the chair. We have 30% of our weight forwards. But coming upright is going to be the same thing. It's letting the hips drop down. And it's this action, I'll repeat this a few times, if you can see that. So the line between my shoulders and my hips, which is where my hands are, my arms are, remains fairly straight when I do this. I mean, not, not, not fanatically straight, but if you, look at, if you look at the pole, and if you look at the line of the pole from my hip to the crown of my head, that remains fairly true. So your hips dropping back with the pull of gravity helps to bring your, your head and shoulders upright. And what we want to avoid is this sort of straining that we normally associate with standing up straight. And once again, just becoming aware of that support from within the body, the bones of your skeleton, the various muscles and uh, sinews around the, the, the skeleton, that slightly, what I describe as a denser quality as we're, we become aware of what's happening within the body. And then letting your hips drop back and push up. Expanding and Bring your hands around in front of you. Lifting the ball and pressing down. Allowing your center of gravity to drop with the sinking down. One more time. And then the wild goose.
and then out in the clouds. One more time. And shape. Keeping the width of your step as always. Take a step forwards, drop your weight a little bit, and just transfer your weight from one foot to another. This involves a certain sort of pushing downwards through your foot. But again, if you imagine your leg as being like a, you know, a piece of a nice piece of willow or some piece of wood that's bendy, what's going to happen is this, this kind of movement. Now, obviously, you have to practice this because that requires a certain degree of conditioning with the legs, particularly for the muscles, but really for the whole leg. I mean, that, that's right, including the bones. And we want to develop the springy quality all the way through our body as much as possible. So the very act of moving your weight and sinking into one leg would be, the, in, in some ways, the kind of prelude to the next movement. Because as I go back, I'm, I'm settling down, but I'm loading this leg, and eventually it's going to push back. And that push back would actually, it, 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 would, it would feel as though it's pushing upwards. But what carries it, what carries it forwards and, and backwards is our intent. We feel the movement and we think, right, I'm going this way. We feel the movement, I'm going that way. So it passes through the middle of your body and then down. Up through the leg, through the middle of your body, and down. This time, when you're in the front leg, push your back knee forward. So your back heel comes up, and there's a slight shift forward. as more of your weight goes forward. And when you go back, it's raising your toes. So if you look here, I go forward. That's about as far as I can get. But now, as my heel comes up, I can go a little bit further. And I begin to bring myself upright over the leg until pretty much all of my weight is flowing down through this leg. And that's when I draw my foot in and extend out. Facing the foot in the correct position. And then on the other side, transferring your weight. Raising toes and heel. Now 
feel aware of that slight sense of a pull through lower back, hips and buttocks. That means that you, you, you have something that's holding you upright. Just notice, have you gone back to sort of tightening your shoulders or whatever? Interestingly, as soon as I did that, my movements became a bit more wobbly. I wasn't it just it wasn't intended, but you know, I did. I get to there and I'm like, oh, so, suddenly there. Yeah. So uh, that thing of your hips dropping very useful for our stability. Stepping in, and then step through. And back the other way. And sure. Okay, so have your right foot forwards. Never mind movement. As you go into your back foot, turn to, to, turn to your right. So this is the movement that you're looking for. And then you turn to the left as you go forward. Again, hands at your sides, just following the movement. Turn your hands palm down. And this time, when you go back, notice the direction of your arm and just let them swing up in that direction. And then dropping all the way down and swinging up in the opposite direction. So wind blows the willows. Okay, and then changing over. Same thing. Go into your back foot, left foot forwards, go into your right foot at the back, turn, and then go forwards and turn. Hands at your sides. Arm down and as they go forward, they get pushed out. Wind blows the willows again. This time, when you're in your back foot, just turn the front foot out a little bit so you can bring a bit more weight into it. Bring the right foot in. Now you just place the toes down. Or if you're okay with this, just raise up. Going into dragonfly skims the water. Just check that your hips and your pelvis are level here. Take your time.
change direction. And good and shake out. Go back to your chair. So back to the seated position and this final exercise brings us back to this central quality of being in line of mind and body quietening and, and and, and settling, and that stronger feeling within, within the body. The image of the mountain is a great image for all of those qualities, I think. So hips sinking down, let your hands drop, and then push them out, like you're doing the wild goose again, but now bring them around to hold a ball against your chest. Draw your hands in, turn them palm down, and last relaxed feeling as they drop down again. Embrace tiger. Return to the And so then just open your eyes. Thank you very much, everybody. That went very quickly for me. That's quick.